Real Life Street Stars. Man, 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 we got Dooney the Barber, man, Priest of the Streets back in here. Uh, we're doing it a little different today, man. You know, we're going to keep it kind of like a word to the streets type thing, man. Uh, definitely want to bring you back in and uh, touch on not only the last interview that you did, uh, but also touch on what's going on in the city, man. You know, giving, you, you know, bring us some words to, of wisdom uh, and just giving us a, uh, your, your insight as far as what's going on, you know, being, you know, kind of an OG in the game. Uh, and go from there. So uh, let's start off like this, man. Uh, for those who missed the last interview, uh, go ahead and tell them who you are, uh, where you're from, what you do. Yeah, man. Um, they call me Dooney the Priest, um, giving that name back in the day um, when I did gospel rap. Um, now I go by the name of Dooney the Barber. My real name is Dwayne Brown, Jr. I'm a junior. Um, and I'm a professional, tonsorial. Barber, other words, I cut hair, um, and I'm also a gospel rapper, um, or a positive rapper, or uh, one that delivers the Ark of the Covenant or the Spirit of the Most High. Definitely. Um, you came in last time uh, that we did an interview, and um, of course, the discussion or a lot of things that you know was said during that interview, uh, it was. Uh, you know, wanting to speak to T.D. Jakes, man, speak to his camp about situations that, of course, happened with, you know, your work in, in the past. Um, has anyone reached out to you since then at all? No, uh, no, nah, nah, nobody, nobody's reached out to me, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's that got back to the camp, but nobody's reached out to me, man. Um, uh, Bishop Jakes definitely know that um, I need to speak with him. I want to talk with him about some issues. But anyway, man, that, all that's really bullshit now. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I'm just going to be 100. It's bullshit now at the moment because the city hurting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the city is bubbling, but we hurting at the same time. And we need a word, man. We don't need no more bullshit, no drama and things like that. But I'm going to come back to the Bishop Jakes and the Ricky Rush subject. We're going to sit down and talk about that because I think it was misconstrued or was misunderstood on what uh, we was trying to talk about and yeah. the things that got twisted. But we, we'll come back to that, man. We but definitely. right now, that's, that's bullshit at the moment, man. We got the city is, is on bubble right now. We, 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 uh, the industry is looking at us. You know, yeah. everybody's watching us, man. So. And it's crazy you said it, man. I'm glad the way you put that as far as, um, you know, a lot of things happened in Dallas in the past, but because Dallas is more so, uh, it's, a, it's a city, I guess you call it a consumer city, where, you know, artists come and, they, they come here to, you know, test the music and get, you know, get paid to come here to perform. It doesn't ha hasn't really produced a lot of stars. So, therefore, the spotlight has never really been on Dallas as far as with, with star power. Yeah. But now that is changing where, you know, whether we know it or not, whether we're seeing it or not, the industry is looking at us. Artists out here are getting a name for themselves. And even though the music that they've had in the past probably had, you know, showed a certain kind of light, all that is being looked at, you know, it's going through. So um, we had a recent situation in the city where, um, uh, I mean, we had a lot of situations, but the most recent as, you know, even while you're here is uh, we had one of our major stars or two of our major stars impacted in a major way in this. Uh, we had the death and passing of Roy Lee, uh, a comedian out of Dallas, uh, where it was now considered uh, due to being shot. Uh, that his uh, untimely passing has, you know, come. And then, of course, less than 24 hours, um, there was an artist that, of course, he had, I don't even want to call it beef, um, that he had uh, mm -hmm. interactions with. Uh, yeah. That, of course, was getting pushed to the public, you know, his opinion on it, to where he was shot uh, in the artist of Yellow Beezy. And at his level of, um, of fame right now and success, uh, it brought the whole world to look down on Dallas and what's going on. A lot of people didn't know about their situations and what they had going on, um, but a lot of people are now looking into it, trying to find out, man, you know, how does this happen? How does the city let this happen? How is it possible? And that's on countless other things that have happened in the past with artists, with random people. Just, you know, it's, it's been a plague in the city that's been going on. Um, I want to kind of open the floor for you just to speak on it freely. Tell us your thoughts uh, from the priest of the streets perspective as far as what's going on and how you man, feel. Man, that is, that, is, that is a hell of a question, man. Um, first of all, let me just send our condolences to the families that, that have lost loved ones, man, in the last yeah. month to 
for three months, man. And, and it is a, a, it's unfortunate that we we lo- we lost beacons like that. When I say beacons, I'm talking about light uh, to the community, yeah. to talent. And Roy Lee, uh, definitely shout out to. Uh, C. Strugs family too as well. We can't forget about C. Strugs, but yes, definitely. But Roy Lee, that that was a tragedy um, for someone to try to take the law into their own hands. The law into their own hands. Um, God is the judge of everything. And uh, let me, I got a passage I want to read, man. Yes, that's sir. gonna that's gonna speak to the generation right now. Uh, the the Yellow Beezy generation, the Mo Three generation, the Roy Lee generation. I got a word. And the, the, the Most High gave me this word, and it comes from uh, the King James Bible and the book of Acts. And it's also in the book of Joel, the second chapter of Joel, and the second chapter of Acts. So we're going to see what the, the word says about situations on where we're going to go from here. Okay? Yeah. Um, we're going to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 17. I'll wait till y'all get it. You can pause the video and go get it in your phones. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And I read, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So I said that to say this. We have lost some beacons in the city. It's a tragedy what happened to Yellow Beezy. Very tragedy. But here's the deal where we're going with it. You mean, uh, the industry. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Cause no, I, I, mean, I got my thought. Go yeah, ahead. no, no. You said Yellow Beezy. I want to, you know, Roy Lee. But, Roy uh, Lee. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Roy Lee. Okay. As well as Yellow Beezy. Yeah. I'm going to have to put that in there, too, because someone tried to take the law into their own hand. Okay, but here's the deal with the word saying. I'm going to stick to this. The industry, y'all listen to me, DFW, Dallas Fort Worth, the industry, for a long time, we have supported everybody else that have come through Dallas. The industry itself is aware. The music industry, I'm talking about scholars and, and, and people that have scientific minds of studies and statistics of making it or being successful in the industry, they have coined the fact that if you can come through the Dallas area, the Dallas Fort Worth area, with any type of music, and if Dallas uh, supports it or like it, then it is a big, high percentage that you will be successful in the industry. We've done that. We've supported many that come through the city. But now, it is our time. And anything or anyone or any spirit that's trying to cause division or separation, we rebuke you, I rebuke you in the name of the Most High. I'm going to pause right there. What God is raising up in the DFW area or a Christ-like type of people. Somebody said, okay, he just said Christ-like. Are you saying that he's raising up Jesus? No, I didn't say that. I said Christ. Christ ain't nothing but a word, okay? And if you go in the Greek text, Christ just basically in Greek, Christo. It just means Christo, which means the meaning of it means is the anointed one, okay? We have a melting pot in Dallas, the Fort Worth area of, in this melting pot, we have Christos, which is a Christ, which is a lot of Christ that you're going to see come out of Dallas. Oh, yeah. Yellow Bees and Trap Boy Freddy, the Mo Threes and the Go Yayos and the Bugatti Casino, CJ Casino, all of them are Christos. They are Christ. They are the anointed ones that are leading this generation that is going to speak and prophesy to the masses. I said that to say this. That you have not seen or heard the things that God, the Most High, is about to do from the city. There are many talented, many talented in the melting pot. Let's go to the definition of melting pot real quick, and I'm going to end this. I'm going to wrap it up. 
melting pot just basically means that it is something that's, that's, that's conducive or something that's combining many races and cultures together. That's all it means. And one entity as a whole. You can Google it, melting pot. So Dallas has many crystals, crystals or Christ in it that's coming out. So what God has done with the talent, and I'm going to use Beezy as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a pedestal for a second. What you're about to see is something and someone and with the most high spirit is about to shock the industry. When, and I, I, I want you to stay with me right here. Shock the industry. Why? Because of the tragedy that just happened, but because of the element of how it happened. Because the spirit of God has no box on it. The spirit of the most high have no box. You can't put a box or put the most high in a box, okay? What the industry have seen with BZ is the fact that the way everything happened and the way God or the most high raised him up and everyone else up in this city without the element of a strategic plan. The music industry itself recognizes that he has surpassed so many renowned names in the industry without the formula that is normally used to blow one up. It's because the most high has a presence. And that's why I carry my Bible. That's why I carry the holy passages, the holy scriptures, even though it's been translated through text. But it, the children of Israel carried this because why? It was the Ark of the Covenant. It was the very truth and the unseen presence of that that they knew of the mystery system that was beyond human comprehension. So I say this to say, I say that to say this. Keep your head up. DFW, keep your head up. And know that we are the very melting pot that is about to produce crystals all over the universe. That's not to say that no one else is, is producing it. No one from the south or the east or the west or up midwest. That, we're not saying that. What we're saying that it is our season. It is our time. Someone I've seen someone say and I heard someone say and I, I, I'm getting too excited that we have a curse on the city. Well, in the name of the most high, I rebuke that. I rebuke that and I stand firm to prophesy. So listen to the prophet right now. That we are about to shake up. We are about to reshape the universe. Not just the city, but the universe with talent that you've never seen before. So what you see now is the very tip of the iceberg. But you're about to see a movement that's about to take place. And you heard it from the priest of the streets. And I'm done. He said something important there. Um as far as, you know, these artists being the anointed ones, um, what would, as far as being a responsibility of these artists and also responsibility of the ones praising the artists, the city, the, the connoisseurs who are taking the music, um, do you feel like Dallas has a new responsibility now? And what would that responsibility be with the fans and also with the artists? That's a hell of a question, hell of a question. And I, I fired me up one before, so people can look past, uh, or go ahead and get the judgment out the way I wait. <laughs> what the Creator is doing, the Most High is doing, you got to understand when I say Christos, because that's not Jesus' name. That's just an office that he carried, okay? Uh, Jesus, that's not his last name. It wasn't Jesus Christ. It was just Yeshua or Yeshua or Jesus. Okay? So I say that to say this, that even in the holy text of the scriptures, it says that Jesus was a beacon of light. Okay? Because he carried the office of Christ. So, yes, responsibility comes with being the beacon of light. There are sacrifices you have to make. There's uh, opposition that you're going to... Uh, you're going to experience. So what do we go from here? I believe that our crystals that are coming out of the DFW area have experienced things. They have things they want to share. It goes beyond the money, the monetary profits of it. But at the same time, they have something to say. So I would say to this generation is principles of morality, we have to learn. 
and we have to figure out and balance our life out like a scale, not a upside down scale or an uneven scale, but the scale, a even scale. And what I mean by that is that one has to go into the process and get into some type of supernatural or natural doctrine to understand oneself to apply principles to your life. Um, whether it be Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, whatever that principle may be of morality, you need to gravitate to it, learn those principles, apply those principles to your life so you can live a better life in the presence of the Most High and so your life can balance out, okay? Your heart can be correct. That's all like I can say. You get into the holy text and you understand where you're supposed to be and you understand who you are called to be. There you go. Um, and moving beyond music, uh, I think the big issue that the city is seeing is um, in our youth is uh, violence, particularly gun violence. Roy Lee, uh, he took a stand saying that uh, he wanted to move beyond having shootouts and things of that nature, and he wanted to get into a boxing ring and and having a you know having a competition that is more so we could both walk away from compared to those losing their life. And I believe something that plays the city is uh, gun violence and violence in general. What are your thoughts on as far as that portion of Dallas Fort Worth? Mm. And the youth. Hell of a question. Hell of a question. Well, let let me make my stance first. I don't um, condone, nor do I support anything or anyone or any spirit that causes conflict, violence, discord, envy, strife, jealousy. Those are not the attributes or the characteristics of the Most High. Okay, we can look in Galatians 5.22 and it tells you about the fruits of the spirit and it starts off with love, peace and happiness and joy and things like that. So I don't advocate or promote that. Okay, whether it be with gunplay or physical play. But I did grow up in the streets as a young man and uh, I'm the priest of the streets. I'm not the priest in the streets, but I'm the priest of the streets because I can connect and relate to the streets. So I understand when I grew up, we didn't work with uh, any weapons or uh, guns, especially guns. Uh, we might have sticks and knives, but not guns. But, but, but we resolved everything in the streets when it came to one-on-one. -on -one. There was no jumping from where I'm from, from the country. I grew up in Dallas, but I'm from the country. We didn't jump anyone. First of all, everybody was cousins. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see him again tomorrow. So when you got into an altercation with someone, I'm just now I'm going hood, okay? You had to stand up and be a man and fight. And, and some guys in front of know that I've had some fights. You know, I'm just using myself as an example. I've won some and I've lost some. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've hit some people and some people have hit me, okay? But at the end of the day, that's it. You got to suck it up if you lost. Shit, I lost a lot of them. And you got to suck it up if you win. Oh, you got to take that. But what I'm saying is that was the most nonviolent way to prove a point. But now it has evolved and people are getting hurt and people are getting uh, people are losing loved ones. And like I said, when I grew up, we just fought, but we had to see each other the next day at school or in the streets again. So it had to be squashed in, in some sense. But I don't promote it or advocate it. But the, the way this world is going now, I think that's what people want to see. And so I do commend um, Roy Lee for even wanting to say, hey, if we just got that type of beef to where we cannot resolve it verbally and squash it, and you know, resolve the situation, then let's go ahead and have our little tantrum or uh, a tug of war, but have it peacefully monetize, uh, monetized uh, for their security, uh, 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 and make it out an event where you know, people love drama. So let's just charge them for it. I mean, Mayweather and what's the name just did it, uh, you know, the UFC fighter. So, exactly. anyway, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. Um, speaking on, uh, responsibility speaking on gun violence uh you also you know let's start with the head of the snake um you have trump in office who of course is an nra fanboy or however you want to say it he loves of course keeping guns you know we are in texas so i understand um he just met with kanye west where they spoke on a simple issue as stop and frisk 
Um, tell us your thoughts on just that whole meeting, because this is what the world's going to see. This is what our kids go to school and learn when it comes to about U.S. history. This is what this is part of it now. Yeah. Tell us your thoughts on that. That's a hell of a question. Now, you know I did the Pull Your Pants Up campaign with Dwayne Carraway. Shout out to Dwayne Carraway in prayer for you, my brother. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, the reason why I created that song is because they wanted to do a stop and frisk similar to that. Right. You know, when it comes to saggy pants, they wanted to, they, if they seen you sagging, they're going to harass you. And I was like, nah, we can't, we can't have that shit. That's too much. You know what I'm saying? We already get pulled over for just being black. And, you know, we don't need that type of altercation with the, with the law. So I'm thinking from an urban perspective, okay, because the white community never dealt with saggy pants. And we can deal with that issue later, too, because I, I've experienced that dealing with white tours. I went on a Christian white tour, and they wouldn't even let me do the song Pull Your Pants Up. They didn't want to hear that song because yeah, one of the really guys told me that, that, that we don't deal with that type of shit in our community. He didn't say it like that, but he was like, we don't deal with that. I'm like, damn, well, what did y'all got me on the tour for? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we'll leave that shit alone. Right. But, but. But to make a long story short, um, I made the song to combat that. And I, and I, I shared that with Dwayne Carraway. I don't want to see you all pass a law. So can we, you know, maybe make it uncool? Since, since rapping or the urban community or hip-hop music made it cool to sag, let's make it uncool. Let's try to, you know what I'm saying, shame it a little bit and just tell everybody to pull their pants up, you know, for grandmama's sake. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, but. For this dad, no, man. And when Kanye sit down, I got to speak on that. When Kanye uh, West, I got mad respect for Kanye West as an artist, as a businessman. Uh, I would love to work with him on some things, even dealing with our community. Yeah. So, you know, I believe he's the very uh, 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 connection to the president. He's our, whether we want to receive it or not, yeah. <laughs> as an African-American community, he's our uh, president at the moment even though he hadn't ran for president, but he's our president. Why? Because he's our plug to the president if we need something uh, said or the president to hear it. And so the only thing I can say is I, I support him 100% um, in what his actions are, but the only thing I would have did differently if I'd have sat in front of President Donald Trump I mean, you got to understand that you're sitting, you're not sitting in front of someone that influences just the hood. You're sitting in front of a, a beacon of light that is influential all over the world. And so when you're sitting in an office like that, uh, we understand your etiquette is not like, you know, the uh, politician would like it to be. But when, if you're going to represent the urban community, I, I would have came in with my subject titles that we're going to discuss in public. I would have came in with it wrote, written down on paper. And I'm not saying everything they were going to talk about, but just subject title. And it right. seemed like to me he had a lot of subject titles, but he was all over the place. So a lot of people was misunder misconstrued or they misunderstood what he was trying to do or convey or say. You know what I'm saying? But I know what he's trying to do, but, it, you know, but he was trying to say all these things in a short period of time. And it confused a lot of people, especially those that are in the urban community because we like, whoa, you know, out of all the rappers and singers and everything, Kanye is sitting in front of the goddamn president. Yeah, but anyway, right. <laughs> right. For real, for go real. ahead, man. No, no, definitely. Uh, that was one thing that I, his thought process was one after the other, one after the other, where he didn't even have time for the first one to settle. He had some good concepts. I like the, uh, yeah, where he uh, wanted to put like a remix on education as far as letting yeah, kids yeah. play ball and educate because some kids are, you know, ADHD and they don't, want to sit down and you know they you know it's hard for them to learn so therefore we, we kind of cast them out i felt a lot yeah. of those subjects um i was just impressed that he got 10 minutes with the president <laughs> i mean to sit in the oval office and talk about whatever he yeah. wanted he could have really yeah. talked about anything i don't think no one was going to stop him um so to have that kind of platform i definitely yeah. commend him uh i know if he ever gets it again he will go in with probably more bullet points yeah and that, yeah the bullet points or whatever but that's that's what but i want to say this again man again commend him on that but he is he is our hip hop uh politician yeah. Okay, he is our hip hop politician. So we don't have a senator, uh, someone we can go to, you know what I'm saying? Especially a lot of, and I'm speaking for a lot of those that are in the urban community that maybe have felonies that can't vote, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so I believe Kanye can represent those of us, you know what I'm saying? And me, I'm, I can vote. I'm, you know, thank God for that praise thank for God. the most high. You know what I'm saying? I can't vote. And you, you know what I'm saying? But, but Kanye um, is our very voice. Uh, as a politician and direct line and connect 
to the president if we want to get something heard from the urban perspective, okay? And so I'm not saying he represents the whole black race or African-American race. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying from where he comes from, especially in the streets of Chicago or from Chicago, you know, he understands the urban community. So he went in with that mind frame. And I was just basically saying if, if you know, next time have his bullet points in order, things like that. But you never know. They might have discussed a whole lot of big things behind closed doors. Right. But, but all I was saying was subject titles or bullet points just have them in order for for one that that you know that don't move that fast they just want to think about every subject you're talking about and then you know they can understand you more and you'll get more support i believe you know instead of opposition so i don't disagree with him uh uh uh, uh about anything that he was trying to do or trying to accomplish because i believe he have a plan you know what i'm saying and so but i know other people have oppositions of what he did and things like that because everybody have their own opinion about the president you know what i'm saying so i understand that too and definitely, man. And I know you want to um, uh, lead us off or send us off with a prayer. Uh, we're going to get into that. But before I, you know, we get to that portion, um, as you came in, of course, as we stated, man, the city, the city's hurting right now. But, of course, this is, you know, the, the dial keeps moving. The, you know, life goes on. Yeah. Um, before we get into the, the scripture part of it or the prayer part of it, um, just uh, what would you like to see for the city going forward as far as um, just in general, M not beyond music, yeah. entertainment, just the city of Dallas going forward, the city that you grew up in, the city you call home? Yeah, that's, that's a hell, like of, hell of a question, man. Uh, I would like to see, let me take a drink, get my throat right, but I would like to see um, moving forward, like I said, when I do music, and I'm just gonna speak on that for a minute. Like I did a song called Gang with Duke Farrow. And um, you know, Duke Farrow is, is one that I've I've mentored and I've, you know, saying and to, to 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 start to gain a relationship with. But he has his own views and his own opinions as well. And um he knows how I feel about certain things. But Duke Farrow, he I th I believe he's good at heart, okay? And but uh, I pray for him just like a lot of guys that I've mentored, and I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah, he had a uh, video that went viral, or not viral, but he had a video that was seen uh, where he was speaking on uh, the situation. So, you know, if, if they don't know about it, I'm sure some people saw that video. Yeah. And are wondering, like, oh, okay. I see yeah, that. you see, someone called me about that video, and I, then I, I addressed him on it and, and let him know my concerns that I don't uh, advocate or agree uh, with, or support anything that creates violence or create tension or create um, envy, strife, or jealousy, anything like that. Anything that doesn't have the attributes of my most high, I don't condone. But but when one puts things out in the air, that one individual is responsible for that. And I've shared things with him, and he know I'm praying for him. I'm his brother, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. in this right here, I have, to, I have to be his brother. But to answer, but to answer your question, um, I want to, to answer that question, I would like to hook up with uh, uh, pastors, you know, um, that got youth at heart, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about youth pastors, you know what I'm saying? As well as pastors, senior pastors too, because they have to approve it. But to to hook up with them, um, they reach out to me and we get something together. I have um, a plan to to pull these particular elements together. And I, I don't want to share it all right now because, you know, it's written down and, and I don't want nobody to jump ahead of me. But I won't, I won't, I would love to hook up uh, with pastors as well as reach out to Kanye West and have him come in to speak. But I would like to reach out, reach out to pastors in our community, you know what I'm saying, especially in Oak Cliff, the DFW community, Fort Worth, um, and, and have an event to where we address the issues from a youth. When I say youth, I'm saying young adult as well as adult point of view because when young adults are 25 and under, you know what I'm saying? We consider youth or young adults, and then you have 26 and older, which are those that are coming into wisdom more and more and more. And so um, I would like to have that particular dialogue and discussion and pull the leaders of the city together, and um, let's sit down and talk. You know what I'm saying? If they would reach out to me and um, we can get a venue, I would love to do it at the Potter's house. Like I said, me and all the Bishop T.D. Jake shit, put that shit to the side. We'll talk about that later. Me and him can talk about that personally. But I would love to... To, to sit down with my bishop and, and other pastors in the city, if you know, and we come up with a plan and a strategy to really, really sincerely in our hearts 
reach out to the young people. And it just don't have to be churches. It could be civil rights organizations. It could be any type of organization. You know, I don't have any problem with any organization that want to partner with us to, to create this. But I'm, I'm going to be a little biased when it comes to organization. I'm going to say this for a reason. Because us as in the African can American communities, we have to pull together first before we can start reaching out to anyone else because we talk about unity all the time, but there's no unity. So in order to help our young people to see unity, we have to show unity. They look at us through a vision. We are of the dream. So they look at us through the vision. So let's show them how to create unity and make a change together. But like I said, I have no... Uh, no problem with receiving donations or any help from any white organizations or any other organization that's not of the African American community. Okay, mm -hmm. but I would rather for the African American community to let's come together first and see what we can come up with. And if we are run short on any resources and anyone else wants to help us, that's no problem. But the agenda needs to be to solve, deal with the problems of the African American community, okay? Not just in DFW, DFW area, but abroad, okay? And um, that's no disrespect on any other communities or any other races or culture, but I just believe that we talk a big talk in the African American community, but no one's putting forth actions because everybody's beliefs and everybody's doctrine and everybody else's opinion, they don't wanna pull together because they want to be it. No, let's just pull together to it for one common cause and purpose, which is to help the next generation, guide a new generation. Yeah, there you go. You heard it here, man. Um, definitely a blessing uh, having you speak to the community, having you speak to the crowd, and definitely goals to strive for because uh, we need it. You know, we need it. I know you want to, uh, you know, lead us out in a prayer, so I definitely want to give you the time to do so. Um, and I definitely – I appreciate that, man. First of all, I want to say thank you for the opportunity, man. Always, Joker, man. Blessings. Real street stars, man. You, yeah, yeah, you, know, you, they, know, you, you gave us a call saying, hey, man, I want to talk. I want to talk. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk to the people. You know, this, it's crazy in the city, what's going on. And, uh, you know, mind you, you know, we, we just had you here. So it was, I appreciate you contacting us and trusting us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, kind of be a voice, you know, be a. So, no, nah, man, y'all my voice, man. You know, I, I don't have a church, you know what I'm saying? Um, Maybe one day I might start a church. I don't know. Amen. You know, something that's unique and different, you know, for the community, for the young people to come and, and maybe just get the truth, man. They just want the truth. They're tired of the bullshit. They're tired of lies. They just want the truth. And I would love, if I did do a church, I would love for you to, uh, to be there with me. And we might start it off on video first, you know what yeah, I'm saying, before yeah. we start creating a venue for it. And uh, it'll be something different, something unique they ain't never seen before. Uh, so. Until that happens, you know, definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, come through. You know, things happen in the city where, you know, we need, we need that voice of reason, you know, definitely come through and That's you know, speak up, on it. Well, y'all yeah. pray for me. If everybody want it, man, y'all hit the likes and y'all hit the comment button. If y'all would like to see uh, a particular body come together, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, and forget about the religions and forget about the, you know, just come for the truth, man. Forget about the different doctrines and just come to the truth. We'll see if we can pull something together like that. But y'all hit us in the comments. But yeah. the, but I want to pray us out. And, and, you know, for those that have been following me as doing it, the priest, man, you know, from the look craze and all them, shout out to the Cray, that's my little bro. You know, he grew up on my music and all that stuff. But but those that have been following me for years, I gotta give them something. So all I ask, man, if you let me end it out, not only in prayer, but with a with a with a, with a song, man. To just that's say dope. what's up, y'all. What's up? Yo, what y'all what, what we gonna do? What's up? So most high, we thank you. We thank you for those that have heard, that is hearing. Um we thank you for where this particular video is going to go, which is places that my physical body can't, uh, Joker's physical body can't. But we pray that if the media is going to be the new lens for those to learn and those to change, then we feel like thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be the voices within that lens. So we pray for those that have lost loved ones. We, we, we pray for them. We, we are in agreement with them. We're grieving with them. And we, we pray for those that is looking for the truth, that they will find it. And so as we end today, we, 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 we thank you for the opportunity. I'm very humble. Joker is very humble. And as your spirit goes out amongst the lens, that we pray and come in agreement that it would 
touch someone, change someone, and help someone find the truth that they're looking for. In the most high name, Ashe. Amen. Real Life Street Stars, Dinner Barber, man, we appreciate you coming through. Please come back. The door is open. It's a revolving door. We're going to definitely follow the music. We're going to definitely follow your your career. And we're going to see you again soon, man. Man, hey, I appreciate the opportunity. And, man, I do this for the fun now, man. I've been doing this shit for a long time. It's just fun. I cut her for a living, man, yeah, shit. Yeah. I just make basic money, man, People shit. People blow for but, fun every day, man. Hey, People I just make basic money, shit. If Don't nobody even support me. I don't give a damn, man. What I do is I do it for the most high. You know, I got some new shit coming out. There's some street shit. You know, I did enough gospel shit. I got about 14 albums of gospel. I ain't even released them yet. Oh. I only released one gospel album. That was back in 08 uh, uh, under Malico Records. You know, shout out to Mississippi Malico Records, man. Y'all come back to me, man. Uh, shit, I got 13 more albums, man. We can work out some shit. Tell Tommy Cal Jr. to call me, man. But, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so we can resolve that other shit, man, because shit, I... Shit, I would love to get that hundred and some thousand dollars y'all owe me. But anyway, let me stop, man. <laughs> but say, man, uh, but yeah, y'all pray for me, man. Till we come back. And um, you know, I'll just stay humble, man. Uh, I don't claim to be perfect. Let me end it with that. Um, can't be perfect. No way. Any man that put on his pants like I do and told you, or any woman and told you they were perfect, that's bullshit. <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> but Gotta we be. can be perfect as we study the laws and the principles of the Most High. So. Hey, y'all. God bless y'all, man. Definitely, man. Real Life Street Stars, man. We salute. Hey. Man, what's up? What's up? What's up with it? Represent that name till I die. That's what's up with it. Man, what's up? What's up? What's up with it? I'm on a mission going fishing. That's what's up with it. Man, what's up? What's up? What's up with it? From the church to the streets. That's what's up with it. Man, what's up? What's up? What's up with it? Yeah. Tell the boys about that cross. That's what's up. Man, I got my mind right, Christ got my mind tight Focus like a Ford just in case I hit the limelight Stay no 24s with my Bible in my backseat Gorilla acting bad in the trunk behind the